In this video, learn how to create a node in Visual Scripten with Subref that we can use it anywhere, anytime, and in any projects. Next, use Subref to rip all of these complicated events into such a very simple node that you can use it in just a few seconds. This event can help you make buttons smaller when hover on it, and it's bigger again when a touch is leaving. Let's get started. If you already knew how to use Subref, skip it and go to minute 8.35. Subref is just like a node inside a visual scripting that you can use it anywhere, anytime. Title is its name. Summary is a description. Double click to open it. Here you can see input and output. Input is the same left arrow of a node. You can set it with any names you want. Most of people using name input, but I love to use an empty name like a node. And output is the right side arrow of a node. I will use an empty name for it too. Each name must be different inside a subref. Subref can connect with script outside by calling a custom event. Create a trigger custom event here with name say hi to print a simple message to debug log and create a destination custom event in the parent script. This way, a subref can call any custom events from this script or from another script. Print a hello world to debug log if I call both subref. Now add a button to call and test this subref. Run the game and press button T. A message hello world is printed out. It means our subref work perfect. Let's add an input argument like message as not debug log. Now I will print out same as any input message. Click add input tab on data inputs. Click plus icon. Key is name of argument. Type is the type of argument. It can be any types in Visual Scripting. Our subref currently has one input argument already. Summary is a description for this argument. Now you can make a note to know what this argument is. Next, I want to enter the value directly from this argument. Turn on has the default value to do that. Type any message in. Remember to add argument from trigger custom event to Anytime you call this subref, it will send a human value to say hi custom event. Press play and test it. It works perfect. Output a human is a value that we can get it at output. 
data outputs grid plus icon key is the name of argument let's print out the current time when we call this subref summary is a description to tell what we are doing time we have a float type value now you can see an argument at output was added next let's get current time value You can get this argument value easily at its exit arrow. You can send the custom event inside Supref too. It works like a script more than a node. Now, when you call this Supref, it will print out the message and the time at output. At the first try, the time we call it at 6 seconds. And the next one is at second 13. Now we have a button only. Create a trigger custom event at this button. Create a subref with any names you like. Next, let's create a destination of this custom event. We will put it inside the subref. This custom event just brings out a message to the debug log. You can do anything else if you want instead. We will not use input tab, but do not delete it. Just leave it there at an exit at output so we can know when everything of this subref is done at output of this subref let's send a message to know that we just received a call from a button play and press button T Subref works perfect with only output. Next, use Subref to group all of these complicated events into such a very simple node that you can use it in just a few seconds. This event can help you make buttons smaller when hover on it, and it's bigger again when a touch is leaving. First, let's create some UI buttons using pointer events. UI create button. Name this button setting. It will open another screen setting page if you click on it. You can get these icons free with link under video. Make sure you set up the UI scale size already. This will fix wrong position of buttons on bigger devices. Remove the text inside this button, we don't need it. Ctrl D to duplicate for more buttons. We can use one subgraph only for all buttons. I will create three buttons for now. If you use your icons, its collider might be not correct. Your buttons can be clicked even you click outside of it. To fix it, first I will create an empty object. 
and a new Visual Scripting script. Name it Button Events or any names you want. At the game loaded, use Set Hit Alpha Minimum. Input this will be the object that has component image. It will be our button objects. I will do it with button setting first. At value 0.1. Do the same with all the buttons. Press play and try to click it again. There are some errors because it needs some permissions. Select all icons. Then turn on read write permission. Click apply then press play to try it again. Now button cannot be clicked outside of it anymore. In last video, we learned how to work with on pointer down, on pointer enter and pointer exit to move player with touch. You can watch this video again if you need these touching buttons. This video, let's see how on pointer up works, it will be different. First, Let's test it normally as all the pointer events. If the mouse up or touch is up on button settings, show a message. Do the same with all the buttons. Next, I will test it directly on the phone that you can see it better. Turn on remote. I will click down on a button and go up at outside of this button. Button is clicked even pointer up at outside of it. Because the click went up at location with no button there, so it has the name of button when the click entered only. To fix these issues, we need a bigger button that covers on the screen. So, when on pointer up, it is still inside this button area. Create new UI button. Name it Touch Area. Set its size to cover on the phone screen. Delete the text too, we don't need it. Additional, some phones can have bigger screen, so we need to make this touch area more bigger that can cover any resolutions of any phone screens. Open our script, remove all of these, and replace it with button touch area. I will show the position of the touch when it goes up. Get mouse position that works for mouse or touch too. Let's test it again on the phone. Now it can get exactly when the grid goes up and its position too. To check which button is at on pointer up position, we're going to check the position with that button's collider. Now let's add box collider 2D to our buttons. Turn on each trigger and set collider size to cover all of these buttons.
at this box collider 2D to all other buttons. Let's compare this current position to see if it is inside button setting collider. Use collider 2D overlap point. Point will be the position to check. Input this will be the object that has any collider 2D. Let's check it with button setting. If on pointer up position at this button, it will trigger to print a message touching button setting if it is true. Do the same to check pointer up at all the buttons. Click down anywhere and go up at button setting. That pointer up at pointer setting exactly as we want. It works for all the buttons too. When pointer up at button setting, let's open setting page screen. Use lost screen to load another screen. Press play to see our result. It loaded setting page successfully. Create new subgraph with any names you like. Copy this event that we made it already. Open subgraph. Paste it. Here we have touch area and button objects. We need to convert them into input argument. So we can use this subgraph for any projects in the future. In data inputs. Add new argument with name touch area. With type is game object. Connect it on pointer up event. Do the same for the input button. Add this argument to overlap event. If the input button is at touch position, it will trigger true and exit this subgraph. You can do anything with this button after the click now. Let's use true and false at output. If it works on this button, it will be true. And if the glit not on the button, it will be false. We finished this subgraph event. Let's add input touch area object and button object. Use this subgraph to replace all of the events we created. Message false if we didn't click on this button. Now let's play to see the result. 
if no button is clicked on, it will be false. And if pointer up at a button, its name will be printed out. If you have too many objects or buttons, you can detect them with only one subgraph using tag, add new tag button, and add this tag to all other buttons. Duplicate our subgraph. Change its name to on pointer up with tag. Remove input button. We're going to replace it with tag name. Add argument tag. With value of string. Now you can enter tag name directly here. How to check which button is clicked on? Every time a touch goes up, we have the touch position already. We compare every button to see which one is at this position. Use find game objects with tag to get all objects with tag button. This output argument is a list of all buttons on the screen. I will add this list button to a flow variable to easier to call it. Check if there is any object with tag button on the screen. Use for loop to check each button. Check every button to see which one is at the touch position. If it has any buttons worth a touch position, mark it in a variable. If we found a button, set this variable to true. and exit the loop event right after. Now at the exit of the loop event, we need to compare this variable. If it touch a button, return it true. All the hands return it false. Now we can know if a touch can be on a button or not. But we need to add one argument at output to see what name of that button. Add new output argument. Which type is game object? Add new variable for the touching button. Add 
create a button object that we found into this variable. Finally, add this button object to our output argument. All done for this subgraph. A lot of script, but now it can be used as one node only. You can use this subgraph to detect any buttons in the screen. Now let's print out the button name. If it's not touching any buttons, print out message false. Let's try to touch anywhere to see the result. If pointer up not on a button, it will be false. If it was on a button, that button name will be printed out. It works well with all buttons on the screen. This time, you can compare the name to see is a button setting. If it's true, load the setting page. Now you know how to the text on pointer up event. Let's use this pointer event to resize of buttons if there's any touches on that button. This event will make your buttons more cool and look better. First, download this folder free with link in the video. I make them into a macro that you can use it anywhere. I already show you how to make these pointer events already. They are pointer up, pointer down, and pointer stay. Let's use on pointer stay with tag to scale the buttons. If you have Visual Script in Plus, it will be on macro pointer. Is it the same? Copy this event to use. Paste it here. It can detect whenever a button enter or exit from a touch. It has on pointer stay on a button or when that button ended true, but we use on pointer enter and exit only to rescale the button. When a button in touch, rescale is smaller a little bit. And when that button is exited from that touch, rescale the button to normal size. If you press play, it will work somehow. But if you touch at the edge of a button, that button will be big and small non stop able because it keeps enter and exit continuously from this touch. To fix it, Let's duplicate the button. We will change the size of child object only. The parent object, I will choose another icon that you can see it better. The touch will detect this white button only. On child object, 
we don't need component button and box collider. Change the child object name to any names you like. Make sure all parent object must have component button and box collider. Do the same for all the buttons. Additional, you must remove tag button from children objects. And inside the script, you can delete these events. We don't need them anymore. Add our pointer event. We rescale the children objects only. Now we finished all the scripts. All these scripts, you can download them free with link under video. Press play to see the final result. It works perfect now. Thank you for watching.